Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, July 12th, 2023. Let's get to the number one topic, which is the Ukraine war. We've got the, uh, the Russians, they are conducting the counteroffensive to the counteroffensive taking place in the north. Uh, it looks like uh, they're making some, well, each day they're making a bit more progress. Uh, I would imagine it's going to accelerate. I don't see this war lasting through the end of August. I, I just don't see that happening. Although, if you want to follow the mainstream media, which we're going to get into that later in the video, uh, they, they'll, they'll lie to you. They'll lie to you about everything until, you know, the lies... Uh, you know, that's the amazing thing that I'm I'm surprised if, if, if you're watching this video, tell me how the American people believe those lies. And then all of a sudden, when it slaps them in the face <laughs> and everything comes out that they've been lied to for oh, a year or two. Well, it's been a year and a half now. Uh, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, OK, I guess that's OK. And I, I'm just like, wow, you know. Are they still going to watch these mainstream media outlets like Forbes and, you know, let's say ABC, NBC, MSDNC, CNN? Uh, I mean, I don't I don't even understand how people are watching that anymore. I mean, it's a slap in the face. But anyway, let's get back to the war. So the drones have taken on a much more significant uh, role in the war. It's pretty amazing. The Russians are mass producing the drones now. And the Ukrainians just lack the electronic warfare capability or the uh, air defenses to take out the drones. And so they're losing now in huge numbers uh, their troops because they, you know, if you haven't been following along, all of the equipment that NATO has sent uh, has been destroyed for the most part. And so now uh, what we have is they're sending forward their troops to try to fight against uh, Russia. And, uh, you know, imagine a, you're just an infantryman. And, in fact, what, what I'm hearing is that the drones, they're flying around looking for, like, tanks or hardware, and they can't find any. So they just say, well, you know what, it's a $25,000 drone. Let's drop it in on the target and, uh, and kill a bunch of, uh, a squad of five uh, Ukrainians. So the uh, losses on the Ukrainian side are getting horrific. Of course, there's losses on the, on the Russian side. But I don't see the war lasting much longer. And, you know, what I'm going to be interested to see is how the media is going to spin this uh, to the American people. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the dollar situation. You know, we've we've spent billions upon billions and upon billions. And we did you ever I mean, if you looked at the picture of the people that were in the NATO conference, I mean, talk about a bunch of old, decrepit, you know, lunatics that are up there, you know, trying to pretend that they're important. Oh my God! I, I I just I just watched it and I go like, how can people follow these people? And especially, uh, well, we'll see. I mean, you know, you've got Poland. Poland might enter the conflict, and Lithuania. They seem to be beating the war drum. So, but Russia's prepared. They've got about three hundred and fifty thousand troops. They got two new, entirely new tank columns that are coming on board. Uh, that should be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, so uh, uh, they are, they're ready for NATO to enter the conflict. Um, and if NATO wants to, I mean, I guess the Russians will just destroy them too. Uh, I don't know if you've been following along. China is flying uh, warplanes all over the Pacific. Uh, it looks like uh, we're beating the war drum to, to send in our, our fleet to get destroyed uh, to, to, to fight China. So we're going to fight China and we're going to fight Russia what are the American people going to wake up to what's going on? But you know what? Let's let's just cut to the, the clips about the media. By the way, I always give credit where credit is due. Alexander Mayorkas uh, of the Duran. Uh, definitely follow him on Rumble or YouTube. I, I know he's on Rockfin and all the... I don't even know what Rockfin is. But anyway, um, let's watch him and then watch uh, Robert F. Kennedy. Ukraine is stuck in limbo. It's not able to join NATO. It's committed to an offensive that was supposed to create political space for NATO at this summit. It has to continue with that offensive. It can't pull back from that offensive, even as that rationale for that offensive has gone. But it's trapped 
into a constant game of um, persisting with an offensive that is going nowhere. And I can't help but feel that a lot of this shows, again, a complete failure to think things through, a lack of basic understanding of policy, which is now so, so much of a hallmark in the United States and in Britain in particular. And I just wanted to reference a speech that has been made by Jeffrey Sachs, the economist who's appeared on several programs with us on um, the Duran. And he gave a speech on the 5th of July to shape saving humanity and planet Earth. And he spoke very eloquently about the state of Western policy. And I'm not going to read the, the whole speech, but there were some, uh, some paragraphs that stood out for me. He says, there's something profoundly disheartening about the politics of our countries right now. The deep madness, I'm afraid, is British imperial thinking that has been taken over by the United States. My country, the United States, is unrecognisable now compared even to 20 or 30 years ago. I'm not sure, to tell you the truth, who runs the country. I do not believe it is the President of the United States right now. We are run by generals, by our security establishment. The public is privy, the public is privy to nothing. The lies that are told about foreign policy are daily and pervasive by a mainstream media that I can barely listen to or read anymore. I would, by the way, echo that. I have to do that every day. I have to listen and read what the mainstream media in Britain and the United States are saying. And it is a constant diet of indigestible material which I find myself obliged to digest. But anyway, there we go. The, to go back to what Professor Sachs says, the New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, and the main television outlets are 100% repeating government propaganda by the day, and it's almost impossible to break, break through. What is this about? Well, as you've heard, it's about a madness of the United States to keep US hegemony, a militarized foreign policy dominated by the thinking of generals who are mediocre intellects, personally greedy, and without any sense because their only, only modus operandi is to make war. And they are cheerled by Britain, which is unfortunately in my adult life, increasingly pathetic in being a cheerleader for the United States, for US hegemony and for war. Whatever the United States says, Britain will say it 10 times more enthusiastically. The UK leadership could not love the war in Ukraine more. It's the great second Crimean war for the British media and for the British political leadership. And I agree with all of that. We have a sense of mediocrity at the top level of our leaders that I have never experienced before in my lifetime. And this summit in Vil Vilnius is the epitome of this. They all come together. They all agree with each other. They have no ideas. They have no plan. They're going to come up with cliches and all sorts of formulaic ideas which will commit themselves to doing that which they are doing already. They're trapped inside a cycle of escalation insisted on by the hardliners in their midst. Only some of them, by the way, are generals, but there are certainly generals amongst them, especially, by the way, in Britain, to my understanding. And the result is that there is no clear way out. All my conspiracy theories, as it turns out, have come true. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. uh, there are no longer theories. There, are, you know, there are now uh, proven hypotheses. But you know what? I I do wonder about it. I you know I was thinking about this this morning <clears throat> that I'm because the, the this kind of this hailstorm of negative publicity about I me mean, really kind of not. It goes beyond like hit pieces to be just this you know poisonous vitriol. Um, and that it's coming from all the legacy media, from the Atlantic Monthly, from New York Magazine, mm-hmm. New Yorker, from the Washington Post, from the New York Times, from Vanity Fair, Daily Beast, uh, Daily Coast, Rolling Stone, and, and many, many others. And they all kind of use the same talking points, and, uh, and they also are not accurate. You know, none of them has really written an accurate... And it, that's one of the reasons it doesn't trouble me is because it's it's just um, it's just inaccuracies and m- distortions. Well, there you go. Uh, so that's kind of what the media is all about. I guess I'll just kind of finish off the video with some clips out of uh, Russian television. You know, there's no way for me to, you know, the, the thing I've tried to do with my channel is to show you what it is to fight a superpower. And it just doesn't seem like, the American people, have, I mean, I understand everybody's got a job, everybody's working, everybody's just trying to make a living. But let me let me just give you some advice. Um, the dollar, uh, in fact, I was having a Twitter argument with somebody. I've kind of gotten on to the damn social media stupid stuff. And uh, the guy's arguing the fact that the money and we spread it throughout the world. But the rest of the world is actually producing the food, the gold, the silver, the machinery, and all this. So finally, the rest of the world said enough's enough. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. That was the original BRICS. And now they're gaining force. It's not just Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. You have uh, well over a dozen countries that have already applied such as Algeria and Argentina and Iran, the United Arab Emirates, Nicaragua, Turkey, Indonesia, Senegal, Nigeria, Afghanistan, Egypt, Kazakhstan, and the biggest one of all, Saudi Arabia, uh, has uh, formally applied to the BRICS nations. Kazakhstan, Indonesia, Thailand, all of these countries and their neighbors that are, are growing together are forming a massive, massive, very imposing, not only from a GDP, but you put all these countries together and their military might is very, very strong as well. And those are the BRICS plus. Now they're talking about adding more countries, including Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Panama, Bolivia, Chile, Cuba, Ecuador, Peru, Uruguay, Venezuela, Azerbaijan, Mongolia, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Vietnam, the list goes on and on. So the rest of the world is saying, enough of you sending us your toilet paper. We, That's you exactly take, right. You take our uh, materials, you take our production, you take this, and you send us this trash. The number one currency right now, remember currency, that doesn't mean money, all right? So your dollar is going down. Uh, it is. We, are, we will experience, if the Democrats, if the warmongering Democrats, if the warmongering Democrats continue uh, in power, which they certainly will for the next year and a half, unless something changes, like maybe some four-star general gets, gets balls and decides that, you know, we need to uh, change up uh, the, the political structure in the United States. But anyway, so uh, expect inflation to get much higher. Expect your dollar to continue to devalue. And then you ask, well, what can I do? What can I do? That cybersecurity guy, what can I do? Well, guess what? You need hard assets. Uh, And I saw silver. Holy shit. It jumped $1.24 a day. I mean, good God. I I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, you know, I've kind of spent my wad. I can't buy any more precious metals. Uh, I just don't have anything i'm just trying to survive month to month at this point and yeah and of course if the price comes back down i might pick up a little more and of course i've given you ticker symbols for all the mining stocks so you got to be invested in commodities you got to have hard assets 
Okay, now does that mean go out and buy houses? No, right now, somebody said my house was worth, you know, three times as much as what I paid for it. That is bull crap. Now, we're going to hit 2008 here very shortly, and this house will go back down to what I paid for it. So I'm not expecting to get any profits off of my house. But what I'm telling you is if you want to buy real estate, wait, give it a couple, three, six months, and you'll be able to get in. Let's watch the Russian video now, and that'll be the end of the video. It has now warned that if Kiev deploys U.S.-supplied cluster munitions against Russian forces, it will have to compel Moscow to use the very same tactic. If the United States supplies cluster munitions to Ukraine, the Russian armed forces will be forced to use similar weapons against the Ukrainian armed forces. And Shoigu reminded Washington that Russia has far more cluster munitions than the United States is supplying to Ukraine. Therefore, they will be more efficient and more deadly with the potential to inflict even heavier losses on the Ukrainian armed forces. Now, of course, uh, these munitions have been used before by the United States in Iraq and Afghanistan to devastating effect. What they do is these cluster munitions, a lot of them remain unexploded and for years uh, later they are sometimes picked up by children who mistake them for toys. So their effects are incredibly long lasting, which is perhaps why it's caused division even amongst the US's uh, allies. Uh, some 120 uh, countries have banned the use of cluster munitions. A lot of them are NATO members. Now, uh, sure, you also touched upon what's uh, the latest developments uh, in the special military operation and he said that uh, Russian uh, forces have launched a counter-offensive uh, across uh, Krasno Limansk where they've made some significant gains along two kilometers along the front line one and a half kilometers deep and he also spoke about the huge losses that have been uh, suffered by Ukrainian forces in the counter-offensive. So some, or more than 26,000 uh, Ukrainian forces have been killed, 3,000 uh, weapons have been destroyed, and among those is uh, 1,200 tanks, including uh, a large number of those, uh, 17, I think, German Leopard tanks. And of course, we're not allowed to call them German uh, Leopard tanks. They say that they're Ukrainian now because they've supplied them to Ukraine. 27 Storm Shadow missiles have been been intercepted. These, of course, are the uh, long-range missiles uh, supplied uh, by Britain, and 176 HIMARS, along with nearly 500 uh, drones. Now, of course, we've heard the news today also that France is now sending uh, long-range weapons to Ukraine. Now, this comes, and Shoigu said that the counter-offensive, Ukraine's counter-offensive, is failing. It's not advancing, and it's not meeting any of its goals. The NATO summit in Vilnius, Ukrainian armed forces have significantly uh, increased attacks and intensified attacks across the front lines in multiple regions in Zaporozhye, the Donetsk region, and also here in Lugansk region. We're in Kremlina, where earlier Ukrainian troops attempted a large, by local measures, attack on Russian positions, three or four uh, dozen Assault troops uh, backed by armored personnel carriers attempting to storm forward Russian positions across the neutral uh, neutral ground territory that divides the uh, the two sides. The attack was beaten back with heavy losses for Ukraine. 14 bodies have been counted, uh, left behind. The remains of 14 Ukrainian troops left behind. Nevertheless, the, the intent appears to be clear. Ukraine uh, is, is trying, throwing everything it has, an attempt to break through Russian lines again as the NATO summit in Vilnius kicks off where Ukraine hopes to show the results of the uh, tens of billions of dollars invested into it by Western states, by NATO states, and to show that it can pay them off, that their investment into the Ukrainian cause will eventually pay off. So far, those attacks that Ukraine has launched, it is worth mentioning that after a month of ceaseless attacks, hundreds of uh, Western-supplied vehicles burned thousands upon thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of casualties suffered. News outlets have been flooded with footage showing uh, devastation, showing mass artillery strikes, as well as uh, the burning remains of Ukrainian armed forces, vehicles, their troops. 
We're seeing Bradley vehicles, uh, Bradley armored personnel carriers, as well as Leopard tanks provided by Germany, uh, heat and burning in the fields and along um, and along roads in Zaporozhye. The Ukrainian side has still been un uh, unable to break through even to Russia's first defensive line that stretches all the way from Kherson region up north uh, through Zaporozhye, through Donetsk, all the way into Lugansk and to the Russian border. They have been unable to breach preliminary defenses and reach that defensive line. revealed that President Putin met with the leadership of the Wagner private military company, including Commander Yevgeny Prigozhin, five days after the attempted mutiny last month. That's according to Mr. Putin's spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov. The president had such a meeting. He invited 35 people to it, all the commanders of the group and its leadership, including Prigozhin himself. The meeting took place in the Kremlin on June 29th. It lasted almost three hours. The president gave an assessment of the group's actions on the front, as well as an assessment of the events of June 24th. President Putin listened to the commander's explanations and offered them further options for employment and participation in combat. The commanders themselves expressed their point of view, emphasizing that they are staunch supporters and soldiers of the head of state. They said they were ready to continue fighting for the motherland. Let's cross live down to RT correspondent Uma Ichar joining me here in the studio. Uma, so could you walk us through what was actually said so far? So the Russian president Vladimir Putin has met with the chief of the Wagner group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, in the Kremlin just five days after the attempted mutiny. Now, apparently the meeting lasted three hours and was attended by 35 people that are part of this group. And the president has, gave, has given uh, the assessment of what happened and has even offered representatives of the group uh, um, employment. And just a little bit of background about what happened uh, when it comes to the attempted mutiny. Uh, it ended with uh, Yev with uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin getting a deal by, that was brokered by uh, Belarusian president uh, Alexander Lukashenko, and so that stopped him from continuing to the Kremlin. Yeah, exactly. So that that background is what happened before. Now, what is the West saying about the consequences of the attempted mutiny? So it is very interesting to note that Western media has taken this whole attempted mutiny very out of proportion. They have claimed that this is the start of the end of Russia, that Russia is unstable. And the latest is that they're also saying that Wagner is leaving Africa as a sign of Moscow purging the group. But here we have the Russian president open to discussions with around what happened with the people that were behind this attempted mutiny. And the commanders have presented their versions of what happened and have emphasized their loyalty to Russia. We also must mention that the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, has addressed the nation uh, after the attempted mutiny and has given three options to the commanders of the group. Either they go to Belarus or they sign a contract with the Ministry of Defense or they go back home. Well, there's a lot more to this story. It's been talked about for weeks now, so I'm sure you'll be updating us. Thank you very much, Uma Ichar.
Russian Defense Ministry says more than 500 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed in the past 24 hours. Several Ukrainian storage sites and military units were hit by artillery too, destroying a reported five tanks and several more rocket launch systems. Two U.S. supplied HIMARS systems were among them, according to the MOD. A number of failed Ukrainian offensive attempts around battle zones in Donbass have been witnessed in recent days too. Meanwhile, a former Russian prisoner who escaped from captivity claims POWs were being sent into minefields by Kiev to trigger the devices. I was held captive for three weeks. Ukrainian troops beat us, electrocuted us, forced us to work and mocked us. I remember once a journalist came, we were forced to say that Russia is striking civilians, and that's why I went over to fight for Ukraine. They threatened to kill us if we didn't tell them that. I was told that if I paid them $20,000, they would let me go. But I heard that they would just let us go into the minefields. If you reach the Russian army, then it's fine, but if not, you'll just die. On the fourth night, we were picked up and sent to clear mines with Ukrainian soldiers. In fact, they just led us onto the minefield, so we would just explode first, not them. The task of the Ukrainian soldiers was to explore the territory, settle next to Russian positions and attack. But they didn't notice that there were Russian soldiers in the trenches nearby. One of them leaned out and pointed his weapon at us. Ukrainian soldiers started shooting and I immediately jumped into the trench. One of the Russian soldiers pointed a gun at me and I told him quietly, I'm a prisoner, look at me, I don't have any arms or body armor. He understood what was going on and started shooting at others and let me in behind him. They even threw grenades. They acted clearly. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, Russian uh, clips. Uh, let's get to the, the new mantra at the end of the video. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. Go tell that glowless liar. Go tell that Democrat writer. Tell that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbited United States politician. Tell them all that God's going to cut them down. Tell them all that God's going to cut them down. And go tell that globalist liar. Go tell that midnight CIA writer. Tell that Diablo rambler, that backbiting United States politician. Tell them all that God's going to cut them down. Tell them all that God's going to cut them down.